To deliver a successful community ownership project, you may need to enlist the assistance of some consultants. This might be because you don't have the skills, time or experience to deliver the project. This video will help you along the process with some tips and tricks. For the consultancy work for Upper Akros and Forest, um, the specific work that we required our consultant to deliver was a feasibility study and a five-year business plan. The first piece of work that was commissioned was the uh, building survey. Um, the second piece of work which was commissioned um, was the housing needs survey, which was probably the most important piece of work. We always advise talking to other community groups. They can give you a warts and all approach and if you want to talk to us, we can pair you up with a group who've gone to a similar project. We have been so fortunate um, in having had Helmsdale um, Community Development Trust uh, a few months ahead of us, well probably a year ahead of us in terms of the development of their housing project and um, one of the first things that I did when I was in, uh, brought into post was to go up and visit Paul and ask him how he did it. Before you've even applied for funding, some funders might require you to put together some quotes. We can help you with your consultant's brief and to take you through the procurement process. Try to always get best value for money throughout this process, however that doesn't mean you should always go for the cheapest option. If the brief is loose, there's too much flexibility for a consultant, things will wander and you'll end up with a piece of work that's cost you a lot of money and doesn't really deliver what you want it to. The Kyla Sutherland Development Trust are not housing developers. We have never owned property before and we've never built anything before. Whereas the Highland Small Communities Housing Trust have been doing what they've been doing for years and they were able to help steer us uh, into us uh, defining what our brief would be. It can be difficult to decide what budget to set for your work. Some consultants use a daily rate, so it could be helpful to work out how many days your project will take. I think you very much need to look at their track record and experience. Um, when you send out a brief, um, you need to ask for their proposal to include um, you know, a good level of detail about what work that they've delivered in the past that's relevant to, to the brief. It may sound obvious, but don't enter into any formal contract with a consultant until you have your funding secured. And on appointing our preferred consultant, we uh, drew up a contract, um, which again, High helped us with reviewing and ensuring that that looked pretty watertight. To put the contract together, um, there are actually a number of um, great tem templates that you can find online. We had an initial meeting with them to really discuss the process, and then they c came up with a few recommendations on how they could help us. Remember, as the contractor, you're in charge of this process. A consultant may steer a project in a certain direction, but you have to ensure that you are managing this process well. I have provided us with invaluable advice. Um, right at the beginning of the project, they advised us to go to the Investing in Ideas Fund to help us pull together a small budget to run a feasibility study. Um, and on the back of that, we were then able to make our full application to the Scottish Land Fund. It's always advisable to seek legal advice before entering into any form of legal contract.